There we go. Almost done. Good morning. So Thanksgiving this week, at least it wasn't difficult to find a theme. Um, and also knew when I started that it was going to be need to be short because we're already at 1130 and we've got things to do today. But anyway, right, we read three passages this morning. The first one was First Chronicles. This was David being thankful. Um, and in some ways, this was the easy one because David is this is the, the sort of the best time in David's life. Everything has gone well. Everything he wanted to do, he's accomplished. Right. This is right. This is. This is really easy thankfulness. On the other hand, the Bible also reminds us that sometimes when things are really easy and things are going well, people forget, right? They go, oh man, I did this all by myself. I don't need to be thankful for anything. And, uh, and so it's right, always worthwhile remembering that, yeah, even in good times, we, we got stuff to be thankful for and, and people we need to be thankful for. But that was the easy one. The other two passages are from Paul. And we don't do a lot of Paul in this church for a variety of reasons, but it's worth remembering that, you know, Paul got like seven books into the New Testament. So he must have done something right. Right. Like compared to my book sales, he did pretty well. Um, and, and interesting that Paul talks a lot more about thankfulness than Jesus does. Um, Paul talks about thankfulness, like all the way through first Thessalonians and all the way through Philippians and, and in reading through the gospels, um, Paul, Jesus only seems to be thankful for food, which makes you wonder exactly how heavy Jesus was, right? But in any case, right, Paul is thankful a lot. And, and so we read the Philippians passages, which is one of my favorite little bits of Paul. Um, but I preached on that last year. So if you really want to know what I think about Philippians, you can go to YouTube and figure it out there. So let's look at Philemon instead. Now, Paul begins almost every one of his letters with some little bit of thanksgiving, um, except Galatians where he's just so mad he just never gets around to it and says, starts cursing them like right at the beginning. But otherwise, right, Paul's always got this little bit of thanksgiving, but it's never just thanks. It's, there's almost always some little something else in there because Paul even in this, is strategic in his thankfulness. He wants something. Every one of his letters, he wants something. And even in his thankfulness, he sort of sticks it in there or he, he does something, right? So, so let's think a little bit about strategic thankfulness. In this letter, Paul's thankfulness is a preamble, is sort of a beginning, an opening to the fact that he wants something, right? And he wants something very specific from Philemon, and it's going to be a hard ask, right? This is going to be a tough one because he's going to ask Philemon to give up power. And asking people to give up power is a hard thing because most of the time they just say no, right? Not always true, but right? I've noticed in this congregation, if you ask somebody to give up power and no longer be chair of the leadership team, it's not hard, right? Possibly just because of the sheer overwhelming amount of power that comes with the job, um, you know, that some people can't handle, but you know, whatever, right? But, but Philemon is gonna be asked to give up power in terms of like setting loose one of his slaves, right? Who he should actually be punishing, right? So he's, it's, a pretty big, it's a pretty big ask that Paul is making. So he's going to, he's going to make sure that Philemon feels very thanked. So here he goes. When I remember you in my prayers, Paul starts out with, right? So Paul immediately starts out by making a connection. It's not just, oh, I'm sort of thankful for stuff. But Paul says, I, I pray for you. There is a connection between you and me, right? And this connection is something I remember regularly and I talk to God about it. And you and I, are connected in specific ways. So when I remember you in my prayers, I always give thanks to my God. I right? always, right? So Paul says, when I, this relationship we have, 
is primarily based on the fact that I am thankful to God for you. Like, again, cr creating and strengthening this connection they have. And I, because, right, so Paul gets specific here, right? It's, it's nice to be, you know, generally thankful, you know, or I'm thankful for my children, but, but exactly what about them? Do they, do they know what about them that, that I'm thankful for, right? Because I hear, because I hear of your love. So Paul says, Paul says to Philemon, it's not just that I know about this stuff, but other people do too. And other people tell me about what a great person you are. So, so you know, Paul says that, that, that the person that Philemon is, right, isn't just something that Paul knows about. It's something that's generally known to the people. I hear of what? Your love for the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus, right? And think, thinking here about love, right? Remember in the New Testament, love is pretty much always an action, not a feeling, right? So Paul says, I know the good stuff that you're doing, right? So he's, he's specific in this, this is what I hear, and this is what I appreciate about you. This is what I'm thankful for. And therefore, Continuing on, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective, right? So Paul says, you know, this stuff you're doing, I hope it works out for you. I hope that the sharing of your faith, which, right, isn't just like talking to people about God, but it's about doing the things you're supposed to be doing, right? The sharing of your faith is the being a Christian part of being a Christian, Right, may become effective when you see all the good that we may do for Christ. Right? So all of this stuff we, we could be doing and we are doing, right? and I hope you see it. I hope you notice it. Right? All of this creates this connection. And Paul says, I have received much joy and encouragement from your love. Right? So Paul also reminds Philemon that Philemon has been Paul's benefactor. Paul Philemon has been more than just a friend, but that Paul has received very specific things from Philemon. Right? I've received encouragement. I have received joy because of your life, because of what you have done for me and for other people. Right? Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. That's a lot of words just for thanks. And Paul has spent a, a lot of time crafting a very specific thanksgiving for Philemon, right? to Philemon, before God, creating this relationship. And, and I don't know, maybe it's a bit much. Right? I mean, do you think that by the end of this, Philemon, Philemon was getting a bit suspicious? You know, like if someone spends that much time praising you, you might get worried after all that they're about to ask for something, right? If you get an email that says, oh, you know, I'm just so thankful for this and for that. And I'm really here about all this grateful stuff you're doing. After all, you go, you know, so generally what happens to me is that someone's going to ask me to be on a committee. Right? That's what I get worried about. And then I say, no, I don't do committees. And then we move on, right? But, right. So, you know, I don't know, maybe at some point, Philemon got suspicious. Um, and, and in some ways, it's fun just to read through Philemon because the whole thing is just so very carefully crafted so that at the end, Philemon has pretty much no choice but to say yes. Right? Paul is really good with his words and he's really good at getting what he wants. And I'm pretty sure he, he got what he wanted because otherwise Philemon would have just destroyed this letter and we wouldn't have it anymore. The fact that we had the letter suggests that Paul got what he wanted, right? But part of getting what he wanted meant for him starting with thankfulness. That's the place where we begin in, in, in so many things in life. It's just worth, it's just worth seeing. So that was, that's my whole message, right? Just to watch Paul being strategically thankful for Philemon, right? And just being strategically thankful because he wants something. So, our next song, number 747.